Hello job hunters. Hello job hunters and welcome yet to another video. So today we are going to be talking a lot about a lot of things. So I'm going to be focusing on Poland and I'm also going to be focusing on Portugal because Portugal is one of the countries that I would really recommend, especially when it comes to doing work, especially if it's not a white collar jobs. They have like a number of jobs that they offer and they have got good packages and after like working they also have like benefits for working there so it's a very good to go to country to go to so the first thing is types of jobs that you might find so there's a number of jobs that you might find being full-time and part-time so if it's full-time you are obliged in in the eu you're obliged to work like eight hours and if it's part-time it depends on what you want so you can work for one hour, you can work for two hours, you can have two shifts because they're working shifts. It's a 24-7 job. So usually it's like two shifts. They have two shifts from midnight, let's say, to one o'clock. Then some people clocking at one o'clock and they go to 10 or midnight. It depends. And you're given free food while it's your working. They give you clothing you have lockers where you can put your things there like you can carry your phones your personal stuff and you can always you have lockers there they provide protective shoes so everything is provided to you but some of the people don't provide accommodation for you you have to look for your own accommodation so the types of jobs are industries uh, logistics it outsourcing qualified blue collar employment drivers and engineers they are also looking for farmers so for consultancy you can also check uh, joy solvers a uh, website i'm going to put it in the description box i can also go and try it here yeah you can see it here so you can also go and check that they offer consultancies for people who want to come to poland to work and the first the first consultancy is free you have to like it's free you're not paying anything then the second one you will start paying but she is the best she recommends like good jobs she has had experience in the factory work i also worked in the factory and yeah it was pleasant i enjoyed it so for someone who wants to come to poland your question is how can i get a job in poland that's the main reason that we are all here so you can get like jobs uh, through also Polish outsourcing staffing companies. They have a lot of agencies here, based here in Poland and in your countries you might find agencies also. But it's if they are in Poland now, you have to know like the real genuine uh, agencies to approach, and they should be registered under the registration. I'll put it here also. Yeah, they should be registered and also in your country those those agents also should be reg registered because you might end up losing a lot of money to bogus people like i once did it. I, I also lost like 200 years the last once with a scholarship um agencies so it's good to be wise about the agencies that you choose and also you can also outsource them through ukrainian companies providing in employment in Poland. There are a lot of uh, Ukrainian uh, outsourcing companies which deal with um, immigration. They help uh, people from outside uh, Europe to come here and work. So because from where I was working, uh, we were actually employed through a Ukrainian company, a Ukrainian employment agency. That's the one that recruited us. And in the in, at the workplace there were a lot of ukrainians and also africans and there were a lot of georgians also i didn't know that there was a country called georgia so there were like a lot of georgians there and also there are also polish recruitment sites i'll also put this in the description um box where you can you also put this in the descriptions and i also yeah i think you can also choose one of these to go and look for a job because it's hard for me to like tell you like oh you must go to the side then something bad happens you know you hold me responsible so it's part it's good for you and me to also take responsibilities of the agencies that we are going to use so how much do, do i need to have 
to live in Poland. Yeah. So for a regular for a family of four, an estimate of one thousand eight hundred and three US dollars is the let's say average spending money excluding rent because rent depends on in the on the area that you're actually staying with some areas are cheap some areas are expensive if you live in warsaw it's a bit expensive than someone living in bialystok or in poznan so that's about eight thousand one thousand it's like eight, roughly eight thousand i'm not so sure if it's eighteen or eight thousand siloti if you am um, a family of four and let's say you're a single person it's an average of 544 us dollars that's like 2420 yeah that includes rent actually and again it depends with where you'll be staying so what do i need to migrate to poland so as a nun eu or eea or a non-swiss citizen you need a valid visa so for all information concerning visas it's better to approach like the consulates they'll give you good accurate information because sometimes your cases every person's case is different you might be required to provide other documents someone didn't provide so it's best to always approach the embassy get good information if it's like an agent you can always go to the embassy and inquire about that agency or the company that you have been referred to to work if you plan on staying in poland for more than 90 days you will need to apply for a temporary residence card so we'll talk about the temporary residence card in um in the next video on what procedures you can do and we'll also talk about the work visa also on what needs to be done so also accommodations let's go back to the employments now so when you're employed in a company they'll provide you with accommodation some provide you with accommodation to make it easier for you to go from work to home home to work so they will need the stability to know that you're always available so they provide accommodation and in the accommodations they have bunk beds and they have a kitchen where everyone is able to make their own food and while you stay at work like i said in the previous videos you are provided with lunch and breakfast depending on the shift that you're on and they also give you like 15 minutes recess so that you can just stretch and just relax and rest so now going to portugal um portugal I love Portugal. Portugal is a very beautiful country, but you have to be aware because <laughs> I have had stories. I have seen documentaries of people who go to Portugal with, let's say, some agencies on a loan and they take your passport and you're forced to work and maybe you might not get like, you might not get paid. So it's always good to research better and always like, work have the money in hand and just process your own papers like they can give you advice and everything then process your own things is best that way so in portugal the gross salary is like 160 euro that is 80 euro per hour so how to start planning to work in portugal so you need a valid visa proof of apocalypse accommodation in portugal and a valid passport yes a valid passport is important then pertinent tax docs so that depends if your country like they provide this in most african countries they don't even provide that anyway you'll need that then background checks for a criminal record yeah that is really needed especially if you're going to work in prominent jobs they will need a criminal record and an employment contract obviously so it's first it's good to first get like an employment contract we states when you're starting the work and probably the, the the period that you're going to be working them that you're going to be working with them so yeah that's what i had for you today and hope you enjoyed this part and See you again in another video. We're going to do a part four next week. So enjoy. Hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.